Hi, I'm Dr. Gregory Davis, gynecologist in Chico, California. Just want to take a few minutes to talk to you about polycystic ovarian disease. What we're going to talk about in the next few minutes is just going over what is polycystic ovarian disease? What, what are the symptoms? How do you diagnose it? How do you treat it? The good news is there's a lot of things we can do to treat it today. So I hope you'll find this information helpful. Okay, let's look at polycystic ovarian disease in a little closer detail. Polycystic ovarian disease is basically all women that have this will have a history of having irregular cycles. And I, I think of it as kind of a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, the only thing they'll, symptom they'll have is just irregular cycles, and those people may have some trouble getting pregnant. On the other end of the spectrum, we have patients that will have irregular cycles, but they can also have a problem with being overweight, oily skin, acne, facial hair. And so this end of the spectrum are patients that have what we call insulin resistance. So what happens is that they're on this end of the spectrum, they make insulin. So their pancreas is making insulin. And so when that insulin gets into their bloodstream and it floats around, it plugs into all the insulin receptors in all the cells. They break down the carbohydrates and sugars, and then everything works fine. Ladies that have polycystic ovarian disease and are on this end of the spectrum and have insulin resistance, it's like they have child protective covers over most of the insulin receptors. So their pancreas makes insulin, but it has nowhere to plug in. So what happens is they don't break down their carbohydrates and sugars. So what happens, they're going to gain weight. And what happens too is that these ladies don't ovulate. So when they don't ovulate, then they're not going through a normal cycle. And as a result of that, they start to have a little bit more progesterone than estrogen as we talked about earlier in one of our videos. And so they will then start to have acne, having oily skin, and having some facial hair. So, how do we actually diagnose people that have polycystic ovarian disease? Well, first of all, we just get a history. So I get a history and it's, it's pretty easy. In fact, it's kind of interesting. If you and I were just to sit and, and to watch people walking by, you can usually pick those people out. The people on this end of the spectrum, they just have a little more problems with weight, oily skin, some acne, some facial hair. And if I were to interview them and ask them what about their cycles, they're going to say they're probably having some irregular cycles. The other thing we can do is that we can do an ultrasound and we can also uh, do some blood test. Well, let's talk about the blood test. If you and I look at uh, the blood test, there's simple tests to do. We check a hormone called follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, and the other hormone is called luteinizing hormone. So in a normal lady, a normal range is going to be 6 to 8 for the FSH, and it's going to be 2 to 4. So this is in people that are normal. Now, what happens in ladies who have polycystic ovaries, so ladies who have PCO, it's just the reverse. So it's a flip of this. So these are going to be 2 to 4, and this is going to be 6 to 8. Their LH and FSH have been completely reversed. So doing a blood test is a simple way to detect it. The other thing is doing an ultrasound. And if we do a vaginal ultrasound in the office, and we take a look, if we have a normal ovary, it kind of has this normal appearance and there may be a little follicle on there and, and we can tell that that's a normal ovary. Ladies with polycystic ovaries have a little bit bigger ovary and they have all of these little cysts around the periphery or the outside, kind of in a rosette pattern. And so that's why we call it poly, means many cysts. In polycystic ovaries is that there's a bunch of cysts on there. So when we do an ultrasound, it's pretty clear. We can determine and see that they have PCO. Well now, if we have ladies that have polycystic ovarian disease, what are we going to do to treat those people? Well, the first thing is, what we're going to do is that we need to put them on something to regulate their cycles so that we get rid of these irregular cycles. Well, what's the easiest thing to regulate cycles? Well, birth control pills. So for, for decades, birth control pills have kind of been the cornerstone of treatment for ladies with polycystic ovarian disease. The nice thing is, not only does it regulate their cycles, but the estrogen and the progesterone in there are balanced out so that they don't have the acne, they don't have as much of the oily skin, and they'll have a little less of the facial hair. So birth control pills are kind of the cornerstone. The other thing which we use are some medication and that is to get rid of this insulin resistance. So what can we do to get rid of all those, 
those child protective covers over all of our insulin receptors. The easiest way to get rid of those is to take, and there's, there's medication, the, uh, it's called metformin, and then there's also something called glucophage, and then there's glumetza. Um, so the metformin has kind of been around forever. It's the generic medication. Glucophage is kind of the little more extended release so it doesn't dissolve completely in your stomach. It slowly dissolves over the stomach and intestines. And glumetza is kind of a long-acting, dissolves as it goes throughout your entire uh, bowel. But the whole thing to remember is that these medications remove those child protective covers so now your insulin can kind of plug in and do what it's supposed to do. And as soon as that starts to happen, all of a sudden your cells are starting to break down the carbohydrates and sugars. And so if you maintain the same amount of activity and you're careful with your calories, you're going to start to lose weight. And as you start to lose weight and your skin clears up, your cycles start to become regular, because you're on the birth control pills, there's a fair number of ladies with polycystic ovarian disease that even if they went off the birth control pills, this, these medications here will help to regulate their cycles. They may actually start to ovulate. And so they may not even need to be on birth control pills. The other thing is the new data that's coming out now shows that ladies that have these changes and they can start as their, in their teenage years, there's about 8% of these ladies, it may start to go away later on in life, the late 20s and the early 30s. But if you're one of those people that it doesn't go away, the good news is there's things we can do to treat that. If you take the metformin, which is a generic medication, and you get nauseated and you get sick to your stomach, well then what I would suggest you do is that you start off taking it just one pill a day. The standard dose for all of these medications is about 15 hundred milligrams per day. Well they come in 500 milligrams so we have you start off by taking 500 milligrams just once a day for a week. If you don't have any side effects and the side effects from these are, are loose stools and upset stomach. So if you start taking the 500 and you're having a loose stools or upset stomach then you just take one pill every other day until it goes away. Then you go to taking one pill a day and then you slowly work up to two pills a day and then three pills a day. It usually takes three weeks or four weeks to get up to the 1500 milligrams. If you can't tolerate the metformin because it instantly releases everything in your stomach then you might want to try the glucophage or extended release glucophage. If, that, if your stomach is still a little bit upset, you might want to try the glumetza because it slowly dissolves over a long period of time and you don't get as many of the side effects. But the good news is for you if you have polycystic ovarian disease is that if you get started with treatment, you can resume a pretty much normal life. The other thing that's important to remember is that if you start feeling good and we get things back to normal, and you decide you want to get pregnant, it's important to remember if you're over on this end of the spectrum and you have this insulin resistance, what do you think is going to happen during your pregnancy? Well, you're probably going to be one of those people who has a little higher chance of having diabetes during pregnancy. So your obstetrician may choose to keep you on some of this medication when you get pregnant to keep your blood sugars under control. And that's something you'll have to talk to your obstetrician about. But the good news is for you is that today with the treatments we have and in pregnancy it doesn't really present much of a problem and usually you're going to do very, very well. Okay, in, in closing and talking about polycystic ovarian disease, it's important to realize that no matter what age you may have gotten polycystic ovaries or been diagnosed, the sooner you get started with treatment, the sooner you're going to get back to normal. The important thing to remember is you're going to need to be on this treatment plan, either birth control pills or these medications here, for the entire time that you're in your reproductive years. At whatever point you stop, then these symptoms may start to come back. And, and I've been asked numerous times, how does this ever go away? Well, when you go into the menopause and your ovaries shut down, it goes away. Or if you're surgically having a hysterectomy and your ovaries taken out, then it goes away at that point in time. And then you may not need to be on any more of these medications or certainly birth control pills. I hope you find this information helpful as you are seeking treatment for your polycystic ovarian disease. Thank you.